Hi, I'm No Socks from No Socks Carves. I'm going to talk today a little bit about doing a heat transfer onto Speedball Pink Stuff and onto Oz from Stampies. Um, the first thing you need to do is find a printer that's going to work with this process. Um, the best luck that I've had in transferring for heat transfers is to use grungy old toner photocopiers. What I would recommend that you do is you take your piece of artwork and you go to several places and photocopy it. And on each photocopy, you write where that photocopy was taken from. Then you come home, and you cut them out, and you do the process that I'm about to show you with the heat transfer. And the ones that transfer properly, you know that that's your copier that will work for you, and you can continue to use it. So I'm working today with a Girl Scout logo, and I photocopied it at my small local copier. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the pink material to size. The reason that I'm doing this is so that I'm not adding heat to any extra material that I won't be using today. I find that if I put too much heat to the material, it forms kind of a thick skin and it makes the surface of the material tough and that's not really something that you want to have um, going on when you're trying to carve. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my transfer material face down and I'm going to cover it with scrap. The reason that I'm going to cover this with the scrap is so that when I apply the heat, um, I'm not going to be burning this area and putting that tough skin on it. And also it protects my iron from getting melted pink material all over it. So I'm going to set the piece of scrap paper down. I've preheated my iron. Um, I'm never really sure what the setting is. It's never really mattered to me what the setting is. What I go by is if I can feel the heat from here, it's good to go. The only other piece of advice I have about using the iron is to make sure that when you put it down, you're putting it very, very flat on the material. Um, I've seen a lot of people iron with the, the peak of the iron down like this, and it's very difficult to get even coverage that way. So you want to have your iron straight down. So I'm going to hold the material still um, until the iron goes down and is holding it still. So I'm going to put the iron down flat, and I'm going to swipe it back and forth two or three times, just that, just a tiny little bit. And set the iron down. Carefully take off the spare material, the scrap material. Then I'm going to carefully peel up the corner and see how the transfer is coming along. That's a little bit light. I'd like it to be a little darker than that. So I'm going to recover it. And I'm going to go over it just a little bit longer. Okay. I'm not pressing. I'm not holding it still. I'm just applying the heat back and forth and then lifting it back off. Okay. So I'm just again I'm just going to peel up the edge. This other finger is holding the material still, so if I need to lay it back down, it'll lay back down in the exact same spot that I just picked it up from. Okay. This is not terribly dark, but I'm still happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and peel it the rest of the way off. I am going to hold on to this because if for some chance um, something were to happen to this carving, I can use this again and again. Um, this is actually probably about the third time I've used this one. Um, I have a couple others going right now and I've done it previously a few times. So you can use it again and again. The other reason to hold on to it is if you have an area that's particularly tricky, like let's say I was concerned about this little nose area right here, what I could do is I could transfer that on to a small piece of scrap a couple of times and then I could just practice that until I was comfortable with it before I turn around and do it on my actual carving itself. Um, an example of that is this is a fox with the grapes and there's these teeny tiny grapes all around the outside so I transferred that probably five times and just practiced it again and again and again when I was comfortable with it then I went to work on my actual um, on my actual piece of artwork. The next piece I have here is a piece of Oz um, material. This is from Stampies. Um, to prepare this, to take a transfer, I've just gone over it with um, some sandpaper. You can see this side, maybe you can see, I don't know, it's kind of shiny. Um, I find that that shiny makes the skin tough and it doesn't, um, it doesn't accept ink well. So I go over it with some sandpaper until that shine that, that outer skin is gone. And then I would follow the same process as I did previously. Would put my 
transfer face down. Put a piece of scrap over it. That scrap is not big enough. Okay, same thing. Iron is hot. Back and forth. You can see there it is. I'm going to get it just, it's not bad how it is. I'm just going to get a little darker um, just so you can see the range. I mean, you can get, you can get it to solid black if you wanted it to be. You just have to be careful that the more heat you're adding, you're taking the chance of making this, the surface tougher. And that's not necessarily what you want when you're um, trying to carve. So here it is. It's a little bit darker. See, it's a little bit faded right here, so I'm just going to lay that back down. I'm going to do that spot one more time. Much better. And there it is. And that is my favorite transfer method.